I'm just like occasionally staring out the window because it's I'm cool. just trying to check to see if it's snowing. Welcome to episode nine of the Cozy Craft Club podcast. That name is a tongue twister. It really um, is. We didn't think this through when we really didn't. Um, so hi, I'm Kate and I am coming to you from Boulder, Colorado. And I'm Amanda. I'm coming to you from South Korea. Um, so it's been about five weeks since we recorded last and um, I wish I had more to show, but I don't have a lot to show. Um, I had a really busy month and it's been good busy, um, but I feel like I've, my attention has been really focused elsewhere, but Amanda has been um, Very crafting up a storm. Kind of, well, it, compared to me, you've been crafting up a storm. <laughs> I've had a lot more craft mojo than usual because the uh, temperatures have finally broken. So working with wool isn't quite that so helped. gross anymore. Um, yes. Yeah, it still gets fairly warm during the day, but it's finally cooled down at night to the point that like I could see myself possibly wearing some wool finally. Oh, Mr. Chester. Chester has joined us. It has gotten a lot colder today or around here. I think the high today is only supposed to be around 40-ish or so. Wow. We got our first snow yesterday, oh, which was very awesome. exciting. It was really more of like a sleet and it was a dusting that was gone very, very quickly, but it was November 1st and there was snow and I got very excited. I'm trying to live through you because if we see any snow at all, it'll be mid to late December and the two winters we've been here so far it has not really snowed even though like they'll give predictions like in the month of December there will be four inches of snow throughout the month yeah. an inch at most over the course of the entire month and coming in like quarter of an inch increments so I'm I just want to have like one really good snow <laughs> I miss it so much snow is the best we had our mm -hmm. first snow um, last year on September 8th and so, and that was a lot of snow. That was not like a little dusting. Um, mm. So it's, it's late this year and I am, I am ready for it. <sighs> I'm ready for it. Yes. Yeah, so let's bring on the cozy weather. Um, you have an FO that you're wearing. Well, I guess I, I do. do. Um, I should say what I'm wearing just, yeah. uh, so this okay. is my boxy by Hohi Locatelli. I knit this earlier this year. So mm -hmm. if you've been watching the podcast, you have definitely seen this before. And then I'm just wearing a sock head hat. Um, it's out of yeah. some uh, black, I think it's Mad Tosh. I'm not sure. No, okay. uh, so I, that's say, wearing. I think the color is showing really nicely right now. Like, I think that's the best color representation we've seen on the podcast for that sweater. It's just such a pretty kind of it's like it, it a really kind of mauve, like a, a really pink in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did, I'm upstairs today in our living room. There's a chance we might see a few snowflakes. So I wanted to sit here um, right. so I could keep an eye outside and see, see if we're getting more snow. Right. Let's so see what your beautiful FO. Yeah. So I am wearing mine, which I'll have to take off and I'm terrible at styling these things. So I knit the Betwixt Shawl by Amba O'Brien. And a lot of you probably know this one from Instagram and social media. It's the one with all the skull lace. I think we can see this through there. And I knit it with odds and ends of leftover neutrals I had. So like this is some bear yarn that I brought from the states that I used to dye. This was that high twist 80-20 I used to dye. Okay. Uh, then I went into a little 
bit that I think, I can't remember what it is. It's a kind of a really dark charcoal gray. And then I transitioned into a, a skein of black opal to do the rest of this. And then the contrast color is a an extremely old sock blank that I got from Renee of Spun Right Round. The first time I went to the Little York Fiber Festival and saw her in person. So this was 2012 or 2013. Um, the logo on the bag is too rubbed off to be able to show you guys here, uh, but it was back when she still had the hand drawn cartoon cat logo, like the first logo. This is some that logo. seriously old spun right around. So see if we can get a, see it. It's a gradient. It, it was a, I think it was an experimental kind of one off sock blank. Um, she started off calling it Oh Neon, crossed it out, and then called it Space Pixie. And I vaguely do remember there being a Space Pixie colorway at one point. It's um, it's basically fuchsia and cerulean, like a cerulean or an aqua blue, and then it's chartreuse. So let me see if I can get this back on me while we're on camera. That'll be fun. My biggest problem with wearing shawls is I can never figure out how to style them and get them on. So we'll just kind of <laughs> tuck that back on for now and call it good enough. Looks great. Yeah, so you guys can't see the bottom. So this looks good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Should we move on to um, FO or not FOs? Uh, Person progress? Yeah. Um, can I go first with my hat since it's got the rest of that sock blank? Okay, so I wanted to use up the rest of the leftovers from the shawl. So I started a sock head hat, which um, I don't really use the sock head pattern as written. I tend to use it as like a template to make other hats out of. It's such a good pattern for that, though. Like you just have best hat pattern. It gives you a good idea of like numbers and then you can really easily work within it. I've never knit a sock head as written. So this is what's left of the sock plank. I'm almost to the crown decreases. I've been trying to guesstimate roughly how tall I can go. I think I've got about one row of knitting more, maybe two, and then I have to start those decreases. But this is knit with the leftover black opal, which I did the brim by knitting the four inches of ribbing, but then I folded it over itself, connected it together and went, it's so squishy and like nice. And then I started with what was left of the sock blank. And this is what we got. Super colorful. And it's so fun. It is, it's so fun. Uh, my daughter's already threatening to snake this one from me. Like almost every hat I've ever knit, she tries to run off with. And to be fair, that does look like her colors. It does, but like it matches my, my shawl. So I'm gonna have to be like, this one has to be worn together. <laughs> if I go out in it, <laughs> they match. Yeah. Um, sorry, my cat is being ridiculous. And if the if the camera suddenly shifts, it's because he's pushing my laptop away to get to a more comfortable position on my lap. As uh, is his right. Hashtag spoiled. So, <laughs> um, for my first uh, whip, I am also knitting a sock head hat. Although I have been knitting this um, for uh, the entire time that. Um, Yes. Since we've last been podcasted and this is literally as much as I have done. <laughs> like I'm just, I'm. You've been busy with other things. Yeah. I've been maybe, I've got maybe like three quarters of an inch past the, the ribbing. I have, I have made a bunch of socket hats. Um, and the first, like, I think three that I made, mm -hmm. I don't wear that often because oh. I knit the brim as called for, which is oh. over six inches of ribbing, which is a lot of ribbing. And I kind of, I really like the hat, but I just don't mm -hmm. really like how that six inches of ribbing looks. Yeah, I've got the newer version of that pattern that it got updated at some point. So there's like six sizes in it now. And I think even the largest one, it's only four inches of ribbing now is where she calls it off. I think other people might've pointed out that three inches is a, or six inches is a wee bit excessive. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I really only like, I don't even measure. I just go mm -hmm. until I'm like, eh, that looks like enough ribbing. Um, the great thing about socket hats um, is that 
like if you're outside in the winter and you're like walking or taking a hike or Mm -hmm. doing whatever, like it's because it's made out of fingering weight yarn, Mm -hmm. your head never gets too hot. I love that about these hats. There's just enough warmth, but you don't overheat. So this sock head um, is is a metal Lintosh Mm -hmm. that I've had in my stash for several years now. And the colorway is called Spectra. I say that looks so, like Spectra. Okay, or Spectra. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like a blue base and it's got like rainbow colors in it. And it's it's really, really lovely. I've always liked that color. Yeah, I have too. I have um enough for like a small sweater, maybe like um oh what is a mama vertebrae? I think that's what I originally oh okay uh, bought it for. Although now that I've knit a couple of those, I don't know I, if I would knit any more of them. No, they're, it's not my favorite sweater pattern to wear. I mean, it's fun to knit, but yeah, I, yeah, it doesn't quite work for me. I went through a big period where I really liked sweaters that were like open front. They didn't have mm-hmm. buttons. Um, and I don't really like that anymore. It was, it was fine when I was in Kansas. Mm-hmm. And it, like, it would get really cold in Kansas. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, but Kansas winters weren't quite like the winters in Colorado. And so I want more coverage now. I was going to say, I like an open front cardigan, but I like it with longer flaps and things so that it can be closed if I want to. I don't like the ones that like mama vertebrae is basically just a back warmer. Like it has yeah. like no front whatsoever. And I think the one I made for myself that I haven't worn in a long time, I think I modified it to have a couple inches at least coming around the front to try to make it a little bit uh, more like an open front cardigan versus just a back warmer. I, I, I have knit two of them. And um, even though they are not my favorite things to wear, I knit both of them out of yarn I absolutely love, so I yeah. still wear them. One of them is an, um, do you remember the ma- uh, modern fair isle color from Madeline Tosh, where it was like white? Oh, yes, yeah, so I was going to say it's white with um, like brown and red. No, <laughs> There's just a bunch of different speckles in it. Yeah. Anyway, I love that color. Um and I have uh, a sweater out of that. And then of course I have the one that is out of the yarn that you got. I got. Remember that. Oh, so, oh yes. Um, hopefully when you get back to the States, you'll just, you know, dye me an entire sweater quantity of that yarn. And then well, I- you know, we're kind of friends. That might happen if you ask nice. <laughs> as long as everything survived in storage. Yeah. Um, so I have one other project after the socket. Do you want to go ahead and talk about your? Sure. Um, the other one is what I worked on immediately after we last podcasted, which feels like three or four months ago. So I've continued working on the the garter, the scrappy garter stitch blanket I've been making. Yeah, I have this friend who sent me a whole bunch of scraps. And so I did what I call the Kate strip on this blanket because it's all <laughs> Kate yarns. So I'm just going to show you all this just attached to where it is. It's all these super bright yarns because somebody likes to knit in worsted weight more than I do. So I didn't have a lot of scrappies to work with. And it's just super rainbowy and fun. And so I knit this scrap strip. I have at least one more I need to do. And then I'm gonna start working on the border for this finally. I don't wanna try to show off the entire blanket because it's huge. And it's huge. It's huge and hard to show off, but. That is what I worked on and it's all, except for like, there's one little strip in there that's a sample of, I think, one of the wool folk yarns, the twist or whatever, the one that has the the twisty yarns, I think, in here. But other than that, it's 100% Kate scraps. So she is now part of my blanket. Yay. Mm. Um, yeah, I was glad that you, um, you one of those because I have all these worst to weight scraps and it's one of those things where it's like someday I'll do something with it but I've been saving those scraps since like 2008 and I have done nothing with them so I'm happy oh, to send them your way yeah I just because I've always lived in hot places I have almost no use for worsted weight yarn and so I had little bits here and there or like there's everything in here from fingering weight held double and DK to I think there's some slightly bulkier Aran weight yarns mm-hmm. in here, maybe even starting to head into bulky or whatever the next designation up is. 
um, but I just didn't have enough. So I actually <laughs> bought a whole bunch of yarn to finish up this blanket. And then you bought a whole bunch of yarn to finish up your scrap blanket. That, that is such an on-brand thing for me to do. I couldn't finish it. So I, I think that's an on-brand thing for like most knitters. Yeah. But some of the colors are super pretty and I'm like, Ooh, I shouldn't use them in the blanket now. And now I'm getting ideas for different things I can use them for instead. I'm like, Oh, darn. <laughs> At least I won't go to waste. Um, I can actually knit pretty well now. So I, one of the things that I did in the time, um, I wonder when, if you were talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> in the time between the last recordings, I cut myself real bad. Um, I lopped off a pretty large, uh, hunk of skin. Um, and so for like two weeks, my, my pinky finger was in a splint, mm -hmm. not because there was anything wrong with the bone, but because I like cut the top of my finger so badly and it wasn't any, like there was nothing that could be stitched. It just had right. to heal. So I had to be in a little um, splint for like two weeks and it's really hard to knit when your finger is in a splint. And now I can actually knit. Yeah. Um, you and I had a rough five weeks, which is why it took so long for us to record. It wasn't content that kept us away. It was, you and I kept having a lot of mishaps. Mm -hmm. um, so you hurt yourself. I got a surprise UTI out of nowhere. So like one weekend we were going to record, I got sick. And so we were like, oh, we'll do it next week. And then you cut off part of your finger and it's like, okay, <laughs> we'll wait a little bit longer <laughs> because clearly, um, somebody out there is trying to tell us something that we should not be recording right now. <laughs> I, I am such a klutz. Like the fact that I cut myself, um, well, you know, cutting up stuff for dinner is nothing new. I certainly yeah. do way more than I should, but this is the worst I have, I have ever hurt myself. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a pretty gnarly one. I was just like, oh. cause that's yeah. kind of like why I'm like, I'm very um, serious about doing like the cat's paw when I'm chopping, because that's totally the kind of thing I would do. I've had so many near misses with my fingers where like I've caught my fingernail or something instead. And I'm like, who that could have been really bad. <laughs> I've done that before too. Yeah. So, um, I only have one more thing that I have worked on. Okay. Um, last time we, re we recorded, I said on the podcast, like, you know, I was thinking about just like pulling out some hand spun and casting on a pair of socks. I love yes. to knit with hand spun. I am always way more motivated to knit with hand spun. Oh, hand spun is the best. So I did, I pulled out, um, a skein of hand spun that day and I wound it up and I decided I was going to make them for my husband. Mm -hmm. Um, there's nothing that my husband loves more than hand spun socks, especially yes. when they're in like heavier weight, like, oh, mm -hmm. DK works. He loves those. Um, so this is what I got oh, out. So I wish that I remembered the color of this. I was just um, going to ask you if you remember what it is. I, I know who dyed it. Oh yeah. And the color is kind of moot because the dyer is Pigeon Roof Studios, who is probably my favorite fiber dyer of all time, but who no longer dies. So I actually bought this braid of fiber before I even started spinning because I knew I wanted to start spinning and, um, I saw I this in her Etsy shop and I was like, I, I love this so much. I have to, I have to buy it. I have to spin it. Um, so yeah, these are going to be socks for my husband. Uh, um, lucky dude. We have very different shaped feet. So I'm, I'm working on an oversized gusset for him right now, which. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I hate doing gussets. Do you hate doing gussets? <laughs> I hate gussets. I'm so glad that for my socks, I don't need to knit a gusset. Um, I have to do more of that. I have a way that I modify my toe up sock pattern with the fish lips kiss heel to do my husband's because my husband also has a ridiculous instep because he's huge and he has big tall feet, even though his mm -hmm. feet are technically flat, but it there's just so much um width. So what I end up doing is in the bottom as I get about uh, two inches away from where the heel would go in, I increase in like four more stitches. And then I do the heel and I do like an extra round, I think before I do it, but I add those extra stitches to make the heel deeper. And then after the heels pass, I, 
I decrease them back out as I go up his leg because he's got very thin legs, but he's got this ridiculous instep. That's totally foot. how my husbands are too. Okay. He's Maybe got like a five foot thing. His calves, like it's like little chicken. <laughs> Chickens, those little ankles. <laughs> yeah. He's got delicate little ankles and a huge gusset. So oh goodness. So yeah, that is that's what I have been working on the last couple of weeks. I, I have been doing some reading. Um, although I can't say that anything that I have read has been I'm trying to think if anything I've read has been particularly noteworthy. I've actually gotten a lot of audiobook versions of like my Alice Cold Breath books. So I was doing a lot of listening, rereading to a lot of these books and just seeing how they sounded. Um, because she's a British author, um, all the narrators are British as well, which sometimes I find distracting when I'm listening to audiobooks, but these ones actually worked once I kind of settled in and got used to hearing. Um, the different accents and pronunciations. It didn't distract me as much as I thought it was going to. Um, I've just been reading my same stuff. I'm still in paranormal and science fiction, romance land, mostly with a little bit of contemporary thrown in here or there um, because life is garbage. And so I'm just reading a lot of escapist frosting, like fantasy stuff. <laughs> Librarian here. <laughs> read what makes you happy yeah. there is no such thing as good books bad books guilty pleasures read what you want True. to read True. I might not like the things that you read but I'm never going to judge you for them and anybody exactly. any librarian that does judge you is not worthy of their job hmm. yeah I remember growing up as a kid or as a teenager and my mother read only romance novels and she had a collection of like 15,000 of them. She had a catalog, Kate, you would be so jealous of her and her spreadsheet catalog. So she would take it out with her so that when she went to go buy more books, she could verify whether or not she owned the one she was gonna buy because after she bought too many duplicates, she decided something had to be done about this. So she spent, oh God, weeks. I remember cataloging every single book she owned and she had huge bookshelves downstairs. Like we basically had a romance library. In our basement. That is a woman after my own heart. She can be very organized sometimes, but like I used to make fun of it, you know, because um, I think you and I grew up very similarly in the nineties. I was one of those, I'm not like other girls kind of girls, you know, like I listen to like metal and grunge and I wear black and I don't like romance and rom-coms and I like all this serious stuff. And so, you know, I used to, I used to make fun of her as a kid. Like, I'm, I'm glad that she put up with me and I'd be like, why aren't you reading real books? You know, one of those, the, the internalized misogyny of, you know, literature choices and, and like, as I got into it about like three years ago now, because, you know, life is just too hard sometimes to read more serious fiction. Um, I think I told her one day, I'm like, you know, I get now probably why that's all that you read because things are awful and I don't really want to read anything else. Being an adult is terrible. <laughs> well, and also like back then she had three young children. Yeah. So I don't think she probably had the uh, headspace for, you know. Yeah, I don't think. Tome. I'm trying to think if I really ever saw evidence of her reading a lot of other books other than like a copy of The Entity and some things every once in a while. I think that's mostly all she's ever really read. And her mother, my grandmother, was also a big romance reader. So like when I was a little kid, there were all those bodice rippers everywhere and like just everywhere, like every house I went to, they were just everywhere. Um, so my mom did not read romance novels, but my friend, Emily, um, her mom did. And I just remember like tons of romance novels all over her house. Oh yeah. Just like I said, just, they were everywhere. So it's just been a part of my life, you know, my entire life that like, oh, adult women read romance novels and they have men shirtless men on the covers and I um I am a lot like my mom and how I read as well we don't necessarily read the same books very often but she and I both read nonfiction um almost exclusively so I definitely yeah. I definitely like picked up that from my mom the same way that you sort of picked those things up from your mom 
Yeah, I used to be an only really nonfiction reader until like about three years ago. Um, and then it's like, that's where I just did this total 180 shift. And uh, I haven't really left that place yet, although I do occasionally read other things still, but I don't know. I don't have really the focus to get through other fiction right now. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people are having that issue with pandemic brain. I think so too. So um, that is all my crafting. Do you have anything else that you wanted to talk to or talk to? You do talk about. Let's talk about and um, your your planner yeah just a little bit um i just i got my planners from hoonichi finally and so i just wanted to say that i got them and uh yeah i've got one of each a weeks an a6 and a cousin a5 um and casey had asked me on instagram if i would do a video of those and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to see if i have a setup and I will do a bonus video for the channel here, and I'll do a, a little bit of a walkthrough of what I've done so far and talk about my first impressions of the Hobonichis. I'm really liking them, like a lot, especially the cousin. Um, I could see this as being my uh, go-to forever planner from here on out because they have a really interesting, unique paper in them that's very thin, but it's also very ghost and bleed resistant. Yeah, it's a very interesting. I, I was dubious at first, but uh, it's worked out so well so far while I've been working on them. That's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I have problems with ghosting all the time. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it's a thin paper and it doesn't. It's, it's yeah, I write in felt tips almost exclusively because my handwriting looks best in felt tip, like really fine felt tip. So I have the problem with a lot of bleed through usually. Same. I'm the same with me. Actually, uh, hold on. I'm trying to find one of my favorite. Of course. Pens. I figured you're grabbing something. <laughs> I use these pens. Oh, the microns. Yes. That's what I use pretty much exclusively when I am um, working in a planner. Now it's um, my turn to grab off screen. Just a second. They come in a lot of different sizes, but I really like the um, the zero one size for doing journaling. Yeah, I used to use those a lot, except for I found that the, the tip ran down too quickly for me. Mm -hmm. I would only get to use them for a short period. So I actually use the Faber-Castell um, mm -hmm. Pit Artist Pen, and this is the extra small, which is the super, super fine tip. Um, and I found that these last a lot longer than the microns, but they're very similar. Um, they are waterproof India ink, highlight fastness, um, similar product, but last longer in case you want to try to give those or want to give those a try. I actually, um, I got my first of these pens back when I was in senior in high school that's when I Ooh, so you're yeah. a long term yeah I uh, the first one I ever got was orange and Ooh. I used it until it died I was going through an orange phase at that time of my life and I really <laughs> loved my my orange pen yeah I think when I'm writing a lot because I used to use those for journaling and that's something else that I've fallen out of in the last five to seven years, I've stopped journaling all the time. And uh, I would find that they'd only really last me a couple of weeks per pen if I was lucky. <laughs> um, if you write a lot, they don't, they don't last forever. No, they don't. So yeah, that'll be coming soon. <laughs> I have seen, um, Amanda has taken pictures and videos for me of her planner, and it's it's really cool. I am so impressed by the level of detail that you put oh, into those. Thank you. It's amazing. I uh, I like to do a lot of spreads, but I'm not like a super fancy frilly part. You know, like when you think of like um, bullet journaling, you think of those ridiculous art spreads that a bunch have become really popular, and a bunch of people do. Um, my stuff is more functional, <laughs> um, but I do like to do. A spread and I find it very calming like this is my favorite time of the year around the end of October I get the itch to be like I need to do my next planner I need to you know do all my spreads for what I'm going to do and in the last 
two years, I've really honed in on what is essential in my planner and what works best for me and what I actually use. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been a a process um, figuring that out. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. If you want to find us on social media, uh, we there's going to be a title card at the end that gives mm-hmm. our um, social media info. And down below is where all of our show notes will be for today. Thank you so much for watching. And we will catch you in a few weeks. Sounds good. Take care. Bye. Bye.